while the Pirates are fun and exciting again, I'm afraid I've got some bad news for Pirate fans. This is another edition of Mike Drop here on Pittsburgh Sports Live, coming at you from up above Market Square here in downtown Pittsburgh. And again, not to take away from how exciting and fun the Pirates have been recently, win or lose, they're an exciting team. They're an exciting offense to watch. And thanks in large part because of the emergence of Josh Bell, who is cranking dinger after dinger, only 12 home runs on 500 bats last year, already well over that this year, and we're not even done with May yet. So on pace for legitimately 30-plus, 40-plus home runs, appears to be an all-star, home run derby participant maybe, actually get him a legitimate home home run derby participant. Uh, Jason Bay there with the goose egg representing Canada. That really wasn't it, but Josh Bell deservingly so representing the Pirates the Midsummer Classic this year, especially if he keeps this up. And more importantly, as I let in with the graphic, the splash hits, the big drip, that, you need to put that on a T-shirt. Josh Bell, Josh Big Drip Bell, what do you call it, the big drip? Because Josh Bell is the first guy ever, already jumping into Pirates history and easily his best year, finally reaching the hype this season after – Certainly a poor season and a bad year last year. Didn't get hurt. Didn't miss time, really. A few games here or there, but played a full season, 500 bats and 12 homers. And you thought he would give you much more as a slugger. But he's doing it this year. And there you go. He's doing it this year because, well, he's sending the fans home happy. He's putting food on the table as Noah Hiles, who has hosted some pirate-related baseball shows here, including him and I going back and forth in the Hall of Fame voting here with Pittsburgh Sports Live. But Noah, that, that's a, maybe the best tweet I've seen in relation to Bell, so I had to give him his due there. But I don't know if Denny's is, is really food that I'd want to brag about. Regardless, Bell putting food on people's tables. So props to, to Noah there. Over 300 batting average, the slugging percentage there, the OBP is there, even though okay last year, better than some thought, but even better this year. Over 400. The RBI are even there for the old heads who care about that stat more than they should. The runs are there. He's dominating for the order. He's become one of the most feared hitters in the National League, if not in all of baseball. One of the most consistent sluggers in the league for sure. And the stats are there. I'm not going to read them for you because they're going to change as, as I breathe here on this show and as you watch this program. But in 16 home runs, I believe, as we stand. First guy, and there's the history, the first guy with, with two splashdown, splashdown big drip home runs right into the river out of PNC Park. Only happened three times before Bell, Bell being the fourth guy, Daryl Ward being the first years ago. But that river, not like it is in San Francisco, that's far enough out of the park between that walkway there out of PNC Park where it's difficult to get it splashed down in the river where it's not bouncing first on the walkway before getting there. My only critique of the park. I wish they would have built a little close to the river. Like the walkway, it's fine for the people, but a little less walkway to get it a little closer. More splashdown home runs. Only been four, two by Bell, the first guy ever to do it twice. He's making baseball fun again. He's a part of making baseball fun again. And Marte's return is there too. But regardless of whether they're pitching or not, and they're not getting the pitching they were in the beginning of the year, they're a fun, exciting team to watch now. They're scoring run after run after run, no matter who they're playing, good, bad, or ugly. And they're not, they're sometimes they're getting blown out, but more often than not, they're winning, thanks to that offense, at least recently. And they're knocking on the door of the postseason, as we currently stand. I don't think that's going to keep up. I'm not predicting them to be a playoff team by any means, but nothing's out of the question when you get this type of production from the middle of your order and of this type of this type of slugger and this type of a feared hitter in Josh Bell. But here's the issue. Here's the bad news that I was alluding to at the top of the show. Josh Bell is not going to be here forever. And that's not breaking news because the Pirates very rarely keep stars, no matter their production, much after turning 30. They, generally speaking, despite McCutcheon winning MVP, and he was declining when he eventually was traded, which they certainly have won that trade, it appears. They don't get enough credit for that, and I'm giving it to them now. But... They try to get rid of the guy prior 
to his production declining. And when you're a small market, you need to do that. But it's also to the fact that they don't even want to offer. Sam McCutcheon was still at an MVP level production, was still playing very well and leading to the postseason. He would still not have been back. I mean, they were able to get away with it, and you can give them compliments because he was declining and he's no longer who he used to be, and so they won that deal to the Giants, and now he's signed with Philly. But the deal he even got with Philadelphia, which was a good deal based on him declining, it was a nice chunk of change for him on that free agent contract. That wouldn't have even – the Pirates wouldn't even have wanted to sign that deal. And if he was still playing at an MVP level, his deal would have even been better than that, exponentially better than that, and they certainly wouldn't have wanted to sign him then. This is what I was saying years ago, that if he declines, they're obviously going to move him. They're obviously not going to care about having him. Then they're going to brag about what they get back for that if they win that deal, which they did. If he keeps it up, they're not going to have him around because then they just can't afford him they're not going to want to pay for him. Either way, he wasn't coming back. And that's been the, the tail of the tape for the Pirates for year after year after year, whether it be – in this regime here, whether that be the fault of Huntington, Nutting, whoever you want to you wanna blame in terms of who's spending the money, the ownership, or maybe how the roster's been managed. I mean, that's really even been the case going back to Kevin McClatchy. I mean, that, that, that's just been Pirates baseball. But you can only blame this group for this group. But under this group, that's kind of been the situation. Garrett Cole, a guy who, no, he was never the ace they wanted him to be, but that – a move they didn't really win. He's fitting in great in Houston and pitching well there. They'd love to still have him to solidify their rotation. And that was maybe a year before needing to needing me to move him. But that's really not what the purpose of this. It's the fact that there are people out there who are already talking extension. They realize that Josh Bell is cranking balls left and right out of the park, that he's splashing down, he's big drip Bell, and one of the best sluggers in baseball so far. And there's already conversation about extending Josh Bell. And I saw somebody bring up a five-year, $100 million contract. How could he turn that down based on what he's making now and the most money he'll ever make in his life? Well, there's one reason why he will turn it down. There's one reason why they're not going to be able to extend him. There's one main reason why that regardless of how well Josh Bell is playing, regardless of how Josh Bell is making baseball fun again and exciting for Pirate fans, he's going to wait until he has that chance. He's going to wait to not be extended before he he absolutely has to decide his future. He's not going to be extended now. He's not going to take an extension after this season, his best year of his career, and that one year where, yes, his value is high. And, yes, $100 million would be great for him. But he's not going to take that extension then if it would be offered. He's going to wait until arbitration or beyond. He's going to drag it out as long as he can. He's going to he's going to believe in himself, play for himself, and believe that he'll duplicate this year next year. And as long as he stays healthy and keeps duplicating these seasons and keeps being an all-star and keeps giving you 30-plus, 40-plus home runs and keeps becoming one of the best sluggers in baseball, 300-plus average, the 500-plus slug, the 400-plus OBP, as long as that continues for Josh Bell, five years, $100 million is going to, it's going to be a ripoff for him. It's not going to be enough for him. He's going to be a guy who knows that he can be worth more. And even if he doesn't, his agent will tell him this is the one reason. Scott Boris, Scott Boris is not going to allow Josh Bell, his prized possession right now, his agent, one of his gems, his young sensations in Major League Baseball, currently playing for a small market and not making that much money. He's not going to let a Josh Bell agree to an extension now or after this season or even next year and take a five-year, $100 million contract, for example, because he knows that if he keeps this up or even some semblance of this, he can't keep this up forever. He's not Barry Bonds on steroids. But as long as he keeps something close to this, as long as he's an all-star, 30-plus home runs, 100-plus runs, and has an OBP of above 400, close to that level, 300 average, then he's going to realize there's a lot more money coming. He's going to realize whether it's the old heads, whether it's the analytic guys, whether it, no matter what generation, no matter what team, no matter where, yes, big markets will be involved, of course. That will annoy you. But more money will be coming because everybody would love this. There's nothing about his production that anybody, no matter how they evaluate baseball, doesn't like so far. 
He does it all for you. And he's just not going to sign an extension. Five years, $100 million, something close to that. Five, six years, even $120, $140 million overall. Great money. More money than I'll ever make. More money than you'll ever make. But, and more money than he's ever made for his family. Maybe they could try to somehow reel him in and force him and dangle the carrot. Okay, go ahead and offer. I'm not saying that's a bad play to try to offer it and try to lock him up now. That's what the Indians did in the 90s when they were a small market and got to World Series because they locked up their guys earlier than letting them get away for big, big money when they were really out of arbitration and could have been free agents and then they were outspent. Then they would have been outspent. And that's happened to team after team who's a small market. Even the Cardinals with Albert Pujols. They, didn't, they couldn't offer him and pay him as much as the Angels are paying him. They won and went to a World Series without him. They spread out the money wisely. And they've been a much more successful franchise than Albert Pujols has had in Anaheim, which is really where they are, or Los Angeles, where they claim to be. But So that's an example there. One of the best small markets and how they've had success is the Cardinals. But they can do what they want. It's not going to matter. Scott Boris is not going to allow Josh Bell to agree to an extension unless you're getting crazy and offer him $200 plus million. I'm not saying he's going to even get Bryce Harper money. And Bryce Harper is well overrated, and I've tweeted about that up a storm. So find my Twitter for those tweets. He's once again having a poor season, coming off a poor season. Bryce Harper, a sensation, a former MVP, a great guy, a great star for the game, but well overrated for his star power and the money he got. And Mike Trout the Ken Griffey Jr. of this generation, but better for his play on the field as a five-tool player, having one of the greatest careers of all time so far and going to go down as an all-time great, already really a Hall of Fame-type career, very, very underrated, really. And he got the money that he's worth for sure, but the team hasn't been winning. But I'll digress on those. He's not going to get that. Maybe there's, depending on the body of work, I guess, depending on when this is discussed. But... He's going to get a lot more money than what they may offer him for this little measly extension right now in comparison. And it doesn't matter. Scott Boris is going to roll the dice. Scott Boris is going to gamble on it, thinking that one year, yes, the value is high. He had one great season so far from what we're seeing if this continues throughout the whole year. And there's still months for that to yet to be proven. And kind of make you forget 2018, which was 12 homers, 500 at-bats. It just wasn't there in terms of slugging production that would get you the money or what they thought they needed out of Josh Bell. He just was bad. Nothing else. They can You can try to slice it injuries. You can try to do whatever you want with it. Young, maturation process. He just wasn't good. And great right now. But the thing is, he's going to hope another year like this comes. Scott Boris is going to roll the dice and say, next year will be like this again. Next year might even be better. He's getting closer to his prime. He's knocking on the door there of his best seasons in the ages of 26 to 32, or whatever you want to argue a prime being. And he's not going to let a guy sign an extension who's a prized possession, who's a great young player in a small market, who's going to be an all-star perennially, you'd figure, one of the most feared sluggers in baseball. Chicks dig the long ball. It's making baseball fun again and exciting, not just for Pittsburgh and for Pirate fans, but all across baseball. We've been on MLB Network. Knowing what he's worth more than even just as a great player on the, on the team, helping the team win. But he's now a marketable star. He can become the face of the franchise. He can become the new face after the McCutcheon era. He can get on the national show. He can be on MLB Network. can be on Fox. can promote the Pirates brand. can help the game that way. can be the Pirate ambassador and hopefully get this team back to the playoffs in their mind. That's all Josh Bell right now. We're going to become Josh Bell, and it's going to be him even more so than anybody else, more than Marte, because Marte's probably not going to be there forever. You'll get Bell more than you'll have Marte. And he's right now better, and he's right now younger, and he's right now more exciting, even though Marte's still all of those things. But there's the stain of the suspension. None of that yet around Bell besides that one bad year. So... Bell's the guy for the Pirates, but Scott Boris knows that. Scott Boris is not stupid. Scott Boris knows producing your own show can sometimes be a hassle, guys. Sometimes it can be a hassle. I got to say, producing your own show can sometimes be a hassle, but I do it. Brush my shoulders off for myself and others. MVP, that's a sign this guy's holding there with a little bell. Somebody tweeted, maybe the 
Dyer's got a ring a bell at PNC Park when he hits home runs, especially the splash down, the big drip homers into the river out of PNC Park. Yeah, that's all well and good. That's all fun. That's great. That would help Bell. And there's that MVP sign right there. We know what all that's going to do. It's also going to help Bell get more money. It's going to help Bell believe in this. It's going to help Scott Boris tell his client no to the extension. No to five years, $100 million, hypothetically, if that's offered. No, no, no. There can be more and more and more and more can be coming. Okay? More is coming for you, Josh Bell. You're my donkey I'm going to ride into the sunset of whatever percentage I get, 20% probably because he's the top agent, 10% at minimum, maybe even 25 but Scott Boris is going to require to go beyond arbitration. Scott Boris is not going to sign an extension now. It's, it's impossible. It's not going to happen. He wants to get his players the highest value they can. He wants to have that body of work be as most, as most sound as it can, be as great as it can be. He wants to have more than one of these seasons. Even though his value is high now, he wants them to duplicate it next year and get his value higher. He wants to take all of it into consideration of what Bell does for you on the field and off of it as a brand Helping your franchise, markability, the face of your franchise now, excitement for the fans, the little fans that still go. That tweet by Noah, not many fans there, even though. There it is. He was sending those fans home happy. You can kind of see through the Jumbotron there. It was an empty ballpark, although it was a weekday game. But Josh Bell, you know, feeding the fans, putting food on their table, doing it all for the fans. It's just not going to happen. Okay, you may want it to. It might be smart for them to try, and if they do, more power to them. But I would advise Josh Bell to kind of not agree to it. I thought Andrew McCutcheon years ago, that $10 million per season, once he became an MVP, he felt like he got ripped off. He kind of did get ripped off. Because for an MVP, $10 million a season is chump change. Not for us, you and I, but for the common man. But for a Major League Baseball player with all the money there, with what the stars are making, with what they even made years ago after the big A-Rod contract and Tom Hicks giving him that big contract with Texas. $10 million a season, nothing. And that's what you were paying at MVP. That's what McCutcheon was getting when he was MVP. Because he signed that prior to that because he got excited when he became a good player, became the face of your franchise. He signed the extension. He signed a, a deal that he thought was a big deal that was good at that time. But he played out of it. He exceeded it. He, Antonio Brown, if this was the Steelers, he would be all over Instagram Live complaining and yelling at everybody and calling people racist, doing whatever he has to do, like a lunatic, try to get more. And he worked for him in the NFL. But, and baseball is different rules, but I cover the Steelers a lot. I'm just got to throw my digs in when I can. It's just funny. But he, he, he ended up being a steal for the Pirates. For those few years where he was an elite player, was one of the best in baseball, one of the best overall five two players in baseball, and was an MVP. And obviously that declined, and he no longer is there, and they won that deal in retrospect. So they got the most they could out of him. And he got a nice, solid chunk of change in, in a deal in, with Philadelphia. So props to him. But he was a steal for those few years as an MVP based on what he was getting paid on a deal he signed prior to that. Scott Boris will not allow Josh Bell to make the same mistake. Scott Boris is not going to allow Mr. Big Drip That guy is making baseball fun again. And look at the sparse stands there. The attendance, not that great for the Pirates, despite winning and being more exciting. But maybe he could help. If they're going to have a better attendance, it's going to be because of him, for sure. But Mr. Big Drip, Josh Big Drip Bell, as I like to call him now, and should definitely be on a T-shirt somewhere. He's going to want to try to get that mega deal. He's going to try to get cash in and get the most he can, and Scott Boris is going to force that deal. So you can talk about it all you want. You can say try to do it now all you want, and yes, it would be smart if they somehow can hoodwink and fool him, but I would advise him not to agree to it. Scott Boris is going to force and not allow the extension to happen, going to force Josh Bell to push it as far as he can, get the most money he can so that percentage gets higher for Mr. Boris, and really maximize his overall value on and off the field. So... We can talk extension all we want. The better he plays now makes it less likely he'll be here in the future. We know all about that. But it's going to be about money if he keeps this up. And even a little lesser of an extent of this, any semblance of this. Face of the franchise, best player on the team, all-star, most exciting player at the very least. If that keeps on moving for the Pirates next year as well as this full season, 
There's no way that extension's coming. There's no way he's not going to an arbitration. There's no way he's not going to want to hit that big deal when he can. There's no way Scott Boris is going to push it as far as he can, no matter what they offer. He'll turn down those deals. Remember, they had to pay him a decent amount even now, and there was conversation of, of – People surprised that he even signed as a, as a rookie with the Pirates because of Boris. That was surprising then. And he eventually is now, you know, the fruits of those labor that labor and that surprise is now really the rewards of being reaped by the Pirates right now. And it took a few years and one bad year last year. But this year is only going to make it less likely. And if he had a year like last year, Boris would rush him to the, the deal if they offered that. He would love to take it. But because of this amazing year he's having so far, Boris is going to push it and push it and push it up the value, make sure the value is as high as it can be, and make sure he forces the hand. And if it means leaving the Pirates and some other big market giving him the money, which I'm sure will happen, Scott Boris is fine with it. He's working against you, Pirate fans. He's working against the small markets. He wants as most money as he can get. It's all about the money for him. He's an agent. And that money would not be maximized signing an extension now. It just wouldn't. Well, I want to make sure to get you to follow... The family, the family of networks here, of course, Pittsburgh Sports Live, of course, this YouTube channel, this online radio TV side of the family to make it easier for us to get the content to you. Here it is. Click subscribe. Click subscribe right there on the graphic. Make it easier for us to get the content to you. Hit up PittsburghSportsNow.com, PittsburghHockeyNow.com, PittsburghSoccerNow.com, SteelersNow.com, where most of my content comes from, the site that I try to steer in the right direction, and we're doing it now, it believes, and, and I believe, but kicking it into gear, Steelers offseason, but that's tons of coverage. Um, and yet to have a real pirate site, by the way. But this will live not only on the channel, but PGHSportsLive.com. So it's running the feature shows, Pirates-related shows, until we get a Pirates Now or baseball, Pittsburgh Baseball Now. It's where Corner 3 with, with Kilberger lives right now because we don't obviously have an NBA site. But we give you NBA talk here, more basketball talk than anywhere else here on Pittsburgh Sports Live. So we're giving you everything that you get elsewhere and way better and way different. We're unique as well as what you don't get there. So that's why to come. That's my quick sales pitch for you that you're already watching. Click subscribe. Make sure it happens and continues to happen, and you know when more of these are occurring. But PGA Sports Live is where this will live in all eternity on the website, and Pittsburgh Sports Live is the YouTube channel to click subscribe on. I love it. It's Mr. Big Drip. I got to get myself a Josh Bell Big Drip shirt. Josh Big Drip Bell, and I'm wearing the Baseball Hall of Fame polo right here that I got in Cooperstown when I was watching Griffey be inducted. Maybe one day I'll be there for Bill. Maybe he'll be the, wearing a pirate hat in the Hall of Fame. I don't know when the next that will be. Maybe not ever again, probably. Because Bell's probably going to be wearing a cap somewhere else if this keeps up and he's eventually inducted. Since he's going to want the most money, and that's not going to probably be in Pittsburgh. But the extension could stop that. I just highly doubt it. And really almost incredibly say that's impossible because of Scott Boris. So... Keep on keeping on, and uh, as I try to conquer sports radio, Josh Bell conquers the baseball. Okay, I think it was Ramon Foster, maybe maybe Vince Williams, who said, I want to hit quarterbacks. I think it was Williams. I want to hit quarterbacks as hard as Josh Bell hits a baseball. He's getting Steeler players involved. T.J. Watt talking about getting a kayak. I mean, guys, that's all because of Josh Bell. They didn't care about the Steelers before, or the Pirates before, these Steeler players. They're having fun watching Pirates baseball, regardless of who's there in the stands. Team's winning, and they're having fun. We don't know how much longer that's going to continue, but forget the extension talk right now and just enjoy the present day. Josh Bell is making baseball in Pittsburgh fun again. Got to show it to you one more time. Just first of all, this is the best tweet I've ever seen. Props to Noah. And then here's my tweet that I didn't use, but I'm verifying, so brush my shoulders off. And then... Mr. Big Drip. Big Drip, what do you call it? Josh Big Drip Bell. I want a t-shirt. I'll pay for it. You don't have to use it as a sponsorship or give it to us here in PSL for free. I'll pay for it. Josh Big Drip Bell. I want the t-shirt. I want the rip curl. I want the river. I want the park. I want something of that effect on a t-shirt. Help me out. Help me out. Give me a free plug if you get me a t-shirt. How about that? Calling you guys. Any shirt companies? Pittsburgh Clothing Company? Maybe you? We've talked in the past. Give me a t-shirt. Free publicity here on the show, at least for one episode. Can't promise the future unless something more is worked, but it can be. But certainly 
one show, one plug, something for a shirt. Make it. Give it to me. I will wear it. I'll rock it, even though I don't think an extension's happening and he'll eventually leave. But I'm enjoying the present day. I'll enjoy the here and now with Josh Big Drip Bell and raking it for the Pirates. Steelers are enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. It's crazy time for Pirates baseball here. Getting close to the heartbeat of the summer. Not yet there, but moving closer. The weather's at least cooperating. A lot to love in Pittsburgh, and I love kayaking. I'm a fan of kayaking. I, you got to get a kayak there when Josh Bell is raking, and we're only in May, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine splash down home runs, and there hasn't been anyone to do more than one ever in PNC Park history. So enjoy it. Josh Bell making baseball fun again, but for how long is the question.